Hello! In my last video, I showed you how to build this, a 10-inch FPV drone for $200. And when I got around to flying it, my biggest surprise was how efficient these 10-inch drones can be. On a 4,500 milliamp hour pack, I got 15 minutes of flight time. I was so surprised by how efficient these are, so I figured let's do a proper endurance torture test. Now, the 4500 milliamp hour LiPos I was using before were leftovers that I just already have from my RC helicopter. It was basically just what I had lying around, and the fact that I could get 15 minutes on these batteries is pretty insane. But for this endurance torture test, I want to get bigger batteries. So I went ahead and I asked the people at Z LiPos if they could send me some bigger LiPos for this drone, and they graciously sent me this little care package featuring a couple of really, really big batteries. So let's take a look at what we get here. We have 6,000 milliamp hour six cell LiPos. Nice. And these should have more punch. These are rated for 100C. The old ones from my helicopter, these are um, like, I think four years old at this point. These are only 50C. So yeah, we have a lot more capacity and a lot more C rating. So this should be pretty good. And it's not really that much bigger. It's just basically a little bit longer, an inch longer. This should fit just fine. So let's charge one of these up and let's give it an endurance test flight. All right, and there she is, a 10-inch FPV drone with an absolutely massive 6,000 milliamp hour 6L LiPo on it. I can't wait to get this thing in the air. All right, and now it's time for the test flight. What you're seeing here is the DVR footage from my analog goggles. I'm using DJI Goggles V2, but with an analog adapter. I have the BDI Digi adapter, and then I'm using an AKK analog module. And I'm going to be speeding up the footage here because this is going to be one long flight. The main reason why I use the DJI Goggles, which are normally digital goggles, is because when you do record the DVR footage from it, it does record at 60 frames a second, which is pretty nice. A lot of other analog goggles I've found record at 30 frames a second, which doesn't look as good. For this flight, I was a little worried because the wind was really picking up today. There are a lot of wind gusts, so if you're taking a look at the amp draw, it's spiking between like 12 amps all the way to 20 amps. So basically every time there's a wind gust, the quad is powering up the motors to try and uh, level the quad out. So we're jumping up to 20 amps, which is definitely hurting the efficiency a bit. But in the end, I still managed to get a really, really long flight time. I also apologize for the flashing fly minutes as well as the milliamp hours drawn. Uh, Betaflight has some kind of default where after 10 minutes of flying and after 2,000 milliamp hours drawn, it starts flashing because it thinks um, you're you're flying for way too long. But because for your average drone, you're normally only flying for like five minutes and using less than 1,000 milliamp hours. But of course, this drone is very different and I could ignore those warnings. So I need to figure out a way to disable that kind of flashing. Anyways, we're approaching the end of the flight. We're past 20 minutes of flight time, which is absolutely incredible. In my first video, I managed to get just over 15 minutes of flight time, but with this larger battery, I'm getting 22 minutes of flight time, and I'm still landing at around 3.6 volts per cell, which means I still had a little bit of juice left in the battery. I believe these LiPos can go down to as low as 3.3 volts a cell under load, so if I wanted to, I could have probably stuck around for a couple minutes and made it to 25 minutes, but I did want to play it safe and extend the longevity of my battery so I landed at 3.6 volts which I think is pretty conservative. So there you go over 22 minutes of flight time on this Z6000 milliamp hour LiPo. Now if you want to get one of these LiPos yourself I actually don't recommend buying these off of AliExpress because they generally have to be shipped on the slow boat and so that can take a very long time. Instead, the folks at Z wanted me to let you know that they have their own website, zbattery.com, where you can order from, and they have a whole bunch of different warehouses located all across the globe. They have US, they have Canada, they have UK, they have Australia. So basically, no matter where in the world you are, they have a local warehouse where they can ship the batteries legally to you very fast. So as opposed to waiting, you know, one or two months for a boat from China to get the batteries to you, you can use your country's local like delivery service to get the batteries a lot faster. Since I'm in the US, the 6,000 million power batteries came from their local US website and it came to me in just a couple days, so no big deal. And for new customers, they have some kind of 10% off promo code going. So that's it for my endurance test for my 10 inch long range FPV drone. If you like this video, if you haven't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you want to learn how to build your own 10-inch FPV drone for under $200, you can check out my YouTube channel for a full step-by-step -step build tutorial. Thanks for watching.
right, I'm charging up this LiPo and check out the internal resistances of this LiPo. This isn't 21 milliohms. This isn't 22 milliohms. It's 2.1 milliohms for this cell. Two, one, two, two, one. That's absolutely crazy. This thing has crazy low internal resistance. Um, the lower the resistance, the better, which means uh, the more current it can put out. And this LiPo has between two and one milliohm of resistance per cell. That is really, really good. The entire battery is 12 milliohms. This thing is gonna be a punchy battery.